This is a video for AQA Further Pure Mathematics, Calculus section 5.3, where we're looking at integration using a substitution x equals sine u. Well, here we have some results that you should already know. Firstly, the standard integral that 1 over the root of 1 minus x squared dx is arc sine x plus c. An identity cos u is root 1 minus sine squared u comes from the cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. And the derivative with respect to u of sine u is cos u. Now all of these suggest that if we've got functions to integrate which include the square root of 1 minus x squared, then a substitution x equals sine u is going to be useful. And of course if x equals sine u then we can write that u is arc sine of x or use the notation u is equal to sine minus 1 x. So we're going to give a few examples now of how we can use this substitution to find some integrals. So let's first consider this integral where we've got 1 over and then 1 minus x squared to the power 3 over 2. That, of course, includes the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if we let x be equal to sine u, then that gives us that the x by du is equal to cos u. So we can make the substitution then to say that that integral must be equal to the integral of 1 over and then we've got 1 minus sine squared u to the power 3 over 2 and instead of the dx we end up with multiplied by cos u du that on the denominator 1 minus sine squared is cos squared so we've got on the numerator cos u and then the denominator cos squared u to the power 3 over 2 in total then that's cos u on the top and cos cubed u on the denominator so that gives the integral of 1 over cosine squared u in total du or writing that as sec squared u du. We've now got to a standard integral that you should be familiar with, the integral of sec squared is tan so that the solution now is equal to tan u plus c but we've got to get this back to an expression in terms of x so we need to use the fact that tan is sine u over cosine u so this is equal to sine u divided by cosine u plus c but now we can use our expression that we were substituting in the first place x is sine u so the top line is x and cos u is 1 minus sine squared square rooted so we can write this as being equal to then x on the top line and then the square root of 1 minus x squared on the bottom line. So that final part there was using the fact that cos u was equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared u. So let's just look at that in full. We started off with realizing that we've got 1 minus x squared square rooted there so that the substitution that we could use is sine u. That gave us the x by du is cos u. So once we'd put those 
into our integral and rearrange it all we ended up with sec squared u which integrates to tan u. The final part is a little bit tricky but if we realize that tan u is sine u over cos u and we can use the expression that cos u is then 1 minus x squared we get our final answer as being x over the square root of 1 minus x squared plus c. And of course then what you could do is just to check that you could differentiate this expression to check that indeed you do get the expression in the integral here. In this second example again we've got the 1 minus x squared so the substitution that we're going to use again is x is equal to sine u and therefore dx by du is equal to cos u. But notice we've got a definite integral here so as well as the uh, substitution in the algebraic part we need to substitute for the limits because these are from x equal to 0 up to x equal to 1 half. So when x is equal to 0 we need to use um, our value of 0 to say that sine u is equal to 0 and therefore u is equal to 0 and when x is equal to a half we've got sine u is equal to a half sine u is equal to a half means that u is equal to pi by 6 notice radians here so making the substitution then this becomes the integral this time from u is equal to 0 up to pi by 6 and then 1 minus x squared is the square root of 1 minus sine squared u and then we've got cos u du so remember that when you replace the dx there it's cos u du from our value at the top here 1 minus sine squared of course is cos squared so we take the square root of that so we get the square root of cos squared is cos and then multiplied by cos u du gives us an integral from naught to pi by 6 of cos squared u du We've now got something that we can integrate, uh, although we do need to use double angle formulae so that the integral to pi by 6 of cos squared is the same as the integral of cosine 2u plus 1 divided by 2 du. So that's using the fact that uh, cos 2u can be written in terms of cos squared u. When we integrate that, cos 2u is going to be equal to 1 half of sine 2u, so we've got a half sine 2u, and then the integral of 1 is u, and all of that is divided by 2. And we need to evaluate that between 0 and pi by 6. So I'll do that on the next page. We've got as far as this, where we've changed the cos squared to cos 2u plus 1 over 2 and integrated. Now we need to substitute the values of pi by 6 and 0 to evaluate the definite integral. Notice that we don't need to go back to an expression of the integral in terms of x because we've changed our variables here 
to or the limits to run from u is equal to 0 up to u is equal to pi by 6. So we can substitute those values putting in first of all pi by 6 into that we get it's actually a quarter so a half divided by 2 is a quarter and then sine of 2u so that's 2 times pi by 6 is pi by 3 and then plus pi by 6 over 2 so that's pi by 12 that's the value with pi by 6 put in. If we put 0 in, sine u is 0 and u is 0, so obviously we get then minus 0. Sine pi by 3 you ought to know as um, a third is root 3 over 2. So this gives a quarter of root 3 over 2, which is therefore root 3 over 8 plus pi by Notice you will be expected to give an exact value there. So either get make sure your calculator is in a mode which gives you a third for sine pi by 3 or make sure you know how to do that. In summary then, the integrals which involve 1 minus x squared can be transformed by using the substitution x equals sine u. And then the resulting integral that we get is going to be something which may need extra techniques. So double angle formula we used when we had cos squared u. If it's a definite integral, then you also need to remember to transform the limits. But of course, then you can use those limits to evaluate the definite integral. If it's not a definite integral, you need to back substitute to get an expression of for the integral in terms of x rather than u. Well, that's the end of this video, but in the next one we'll be looking at similar ideas but using the substitution x equals tan u.